video five of chapter one, we are going to transition now from describing quantitative data to displaying quantitative data. And so this is going to be part one of a two-part video of how to display quantitative data. There might actually even be three parts. I don't remember at this point, but we'll get there. But this is just part one. Now, at the very end of the last video, I showed you an example, or I asked you to describe this distribution, but I didn't really name this type of graph. And so this type of graph is called a dot plot. Why a dot plot? Oh, I don't know, because it's made up of dots. Do they have to be dots? No, they don't have to be dots, but a dot plot uses dots. So just be smart about it, use dots. Now, we have quantitative data here, the number of siblings, zero, one, two, three, four. We could talk about the average number of siblings that a person would have based on this data. Now, I wanna show you an example of uh, something that's not a dot plot that might look a lot like a dot plot. And you might go, but these are dots and this is a plot, so why isn't this a dot plot? Well, look at the data that we have here. The data is about, uh, I guess, preferred, oh yeah, duh, here, right here, preferred snack choice. And this is not quantitative data, this is categorical data. So this cannot be displayed as a dot plot. This would be displayed as a, oh, I don't know, something we talked about earlier, a bar graph that would be perfect for this or a pie chart, perhaps, if we wanted to represent things as percentages. So just because you see dots does not mean it is necessarily a dot plot. Make sure that your data being displayed here is quantitative and not categorical. Now, the other type of plot we're gonna discuss in this video are stem plots. And you might have seen these before in a previous math class. Maybe they were called stem and leaf plots, but we just refer to them as stem plots. Now, I have a set of data here, AP Statistics Final Exam Scores in 2011 by gender. And so first, what I wanna do is graph all of these scores, regardless of gender, male or female. And so what I notice is that the lowest test score is a 51% by a male. Yeah, laugh it up, ladies, it's okay. Uh, and the highest test score is a 105, again, by a male. Yeah, you laughing now, ladies? Not so much. Anyway, um, what we do is we notice that the stems are over here on the left side, and they are gonna represent our tens digit for all of the scores. Okay, so we've got scores in the 50s, we have scores in the 60s, we have scores in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and in the 100s. Now, if I had scores less than 51, then maybe I'd have a four here for the scores in the 40s and 30s. But if you don't have anything less than your minimum, then it really makes no sense to put additional stems below it. Likewise, additional stems above are 10, right? Because we had no scores in the 110%. So there's no need to put it there. It just means that you're, you're out of data at that point. So then what we do is we kind of split our two-digit number into two single-digit numbers. So the one here really just says it goes with this five, and it's a 51. And in order to really know that that's a 51 and not something like 5.1, or that could really represent 0.51, we don't know. So we have to insert a key into the mix here. So when you see a number on the left with a vertical line and then another number, we're gonna interpret that as the number 51. And in this case, it's 51%, okay? So we go through all the rest of our data and we label all the values in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and up into the 100s. Two extra things to note here, actually three extra things, and I've made one note right here, is do not skip stems where no data exists. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say that that 51 was really a 41. So I would have to make this come up here. And then let's say there were no numbers in the 50s. So someone might say, do I really need to put a five here? And really, could I just take this four and this one and put it where the five and the one is? Or do I really have to put that five if there's no data? And the answer is you have to put that five there but then what would you put right in this area if there's no data? 
you would simply just leave it blank. If you put a zero there, well then you're saying there's a score of 50. So if you leave it blank, you're really showing that there is a gap in your data. And you're really showing that, you know, most people pass this test if we consider a 60% passing, but then there was this person that was just really far below. I mean, almost 20% below passing. So don't skip any stems where no data exists. You still have to display them. All right, another thing to note is notice how the first digits for each stem are all perfectly lined up here. And the second digits are all perfectly lined up vertically. The third digits are all perfectly lined up. The fourth digits, fifth, sixth, and really the seventh, eighth, and ninth kind of rows, if you will, there's no other values with them in any other stem, so they're fine the way they are. So really just make your each data number here have equal spacing. You know, you don't want to have an example where, um, like let's say there were some more numbers in the 60s, like maybe we had a, another 65 and a 66 and a couple 69s, and then all of a sudden this is really squished in here while everything else is equally spaced, you're going to kind of lose track that there's many more scores in the 60s because it looks like there's about as many as scores in the 70s because they look like they're about the same, but they're not. Okay? So don't skip stems where no data exists. Make sure everything lines up nicely here. And the other thing is, what I've noted here, is that your leaves, and these are your leaves, if you will, uh, and these over here are your stems, uh, that they must contain the same number of digits. So what if I had given you a data set that was in the hundreds, okay? Um, and I can't really think off the top of my head how we could easily change this over uh, into numbers in the hundreds. But let's say, I don't know, we're talking minimum wage over the past, or minimum wage uh, across different cities in your state. And let's say the first one's $5.10. Well, we could put a one zero here. And then let's say this is $6.40 and $6.50 and $6.90 minimum wage. Um, you can have all these be two-digit numbers. But if you had two-digit numbers and single-digit numbers, like for instance, what if, like this zero here, what if there was a $9 minimum wage? You would have to put both of those zeros in there to indicate that this would be a $9 minimum wage. If for some reason you had a mixture of two digits and three digit numbers, then that would be reflected more so over here in the stem, right? Because we did have some three digit numbers, numbers that were in the hundreds, but it was the stem that took on the extra digit instead of the leaf. Okay, so I think I've hit everything about stem plots that we really need to discuss in here. Oh, one other thing I just realized. Someone might ask, do the leaves, kind of the units digits in this case, do they have to be in order, right? Because this goes four, five, nine. Those are in uh, ascending order. Two, three, four, nine. Those are in ascending order. All of the numbers down here in the 90s, those are all in ascending order. And honestly, the answer is no. They don't have to be in ascending order. It just makes it look nicer, to be honest with you. But you could have all of these numbers down here. You could mix them up any way you want to, but you might not see the fact that there were three scores that were all 91 if they weren't all stacked together like this. So ideally in ascending order or descending order if you like, but it makes more sense if they're in ascending order. Okay? And then the last thing I'll just point out here, I keep remembering stuff, it's okay, It's if I turn this sideways, and if I were to replace all of those numbers with, oh, I don't know, dots, huh, then it's almost like I got a dot plot, right? I mean, we kind of lose track of what these values represent, uh, but it does give us kind of an idea that stem plots and dot plots are pretty similar to each other, okay? They both display quantitative data. Now, there is a variation on a stem plot called a split stem plot. And the key thing about using a split stem plot is it allows condensed data sets to spread out a little more. So in this case, we had scores from the 50s all the way up into the 100 percents. And really, if I were to look at this data set, I could describe the shape of it fairly well. And I would have to, again, think of this kind of sideways. And to me, the shape of this distribution would be oh, I don't know, skewed left. 
But if I were to look at a split stem plot, it spreads out that distribution more than it was before. And again, if I were to look at this sideways, now I might be tempted to say that it's bimodal because it kind of looks like there's two humps in here. But at the same time, I could just kind of overlook that little hump and say, there's the main hump up here. And I would still probably call it skewed left, okay? But it probably looks more skewed left. So I wouldn't necessarily have done a split stem plot with this set of data. But let's say I gave a test and all the scores were in the, oh, I don't know, the 80s and 90s. If all the scores were in the 80s and 90s and I didn't do a split stem plot, then I'd only have two stems, right? I'd have a stem that's in the eight, I'd have an eight stem and a nine stem, and then I'd have all of these data points. I'd have all these other numbers. And then I couldn't really tell what the shape of that distribution is. So if I use a split stem plot, at least I would have four stems, and that would give me a better idea. Now, let me go back and talk about all of a sudden how we ended up with two of each number. So this first five represents really the first five numbers in the 50s. So if you had a 50 up to 54, including a 54, that would go in this first five stem. This second five represents scores that are 55 through 59. And we didn't have any data in that particular range. So notice there's nothing here. You don't put anything here. And then the next six is from the first set of 60s, 60 through 64. The second six is for the second half of the 60s, 65 through 69, and so forth and so on. It's always the first half of that particular set of numbers and then the second half, secondly. Now, I've only ever seen split stem plots that split up into two groups, okay? I've had students ask me occasionally, could I do a split stem plot where I split up by twos and do something crazy like I have five fives? So this is... 50s and 51s, and then you got 52s and 53s, and then 54s and 55s, and 56, 57, 58, 59. I would say that that's probably possible, but only if, let's say, you had nothing but scores in the 50s, then would you really want to do that. So just know for all intents and purposes that a split stem plot is just going to spread out your data a little more if it's too compacted together. All right. One more stem plot. It's called a back-to-back -back stem plot. And this will break our data down by a categorical variable. So here's where we maybe do want to talk about male versus female scores. And so how this works is I only graph the female data on one side of my back-to-back -back stem plot and the male data on the other side. Now here's where it gets a little tricky on the left side is you kind of have to read everything backwards. So this 1, 5 isn't a 15. It's really you start with this stem of 5, and it belongs to that 1, and we get a 51. So it's super important to have keys. And yes, I said plural keys. Uh, you need a key for the male side to know how to read things from a right to left direction. And you need a key for the right-hand side, for the females, to know that you're reading all your numbers from left to right as normal. So again, this 7 means it's going to go with a 4, and that means 74. And you could pick any of the values to represent the key. It doesn't have to be the first one. But I would recommend making it the first value like I did here. Because those would be the first numbers that you would see in your stem plot. All right. Um, by splitting up our stem plot back to back with male versus females, now we could make some sort of comparison between our males and females. We can notice here that the spread in the female data is less so than the spread in the male data. Right? The range of the female data is much more compacted together versus the males are much more spread out. Now, if we were to go through and look at the means and medians or discuss the shapes, um, we, we could do that as well. And we could talk about how the median of the males is different than the median of the females, etc., etc. So you can have just regular old stem plots. Switch that back. There we go. Or you could split it up a little bit. Or you could, if you have the option of a categorical variable, you could split it up that way. Now, some pros and really pros of dot plots and stem plots. Really, dot plots and stem plots both work well with smaller data sets. So what happens if you have a larger data set? Well, you're going to stick around for future videos. 
So again, smaller data sets, I would say anything, oh, I don't know, 20 or less. 20 or less data values, dot plots and stem plots are probably going to work really well. Uh, number two, dot plots work well with very condensed data sets. So for instance, let me jump back to our dot plot example. Nope, too far. Notice in this dot plot example, we only have five numbers that were possibilities here. That's a very condensed data set. Uh, if we had, if we were going to try to make a stem plot of this, and we have single digits, well, in a stem plot, we'd have a zero, and then we'd have a line, and we'd have, what, four zeros for these four zeros? We'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. Is that eight? No, seven, eight. And we'd have six twos, and then three threes, and then a four, and you'd have one stem. And then you might go, well, could we do a split stem plot with that? Yeah, you'd have just two stems. Um, and honestly, all of these are in the lower half of the zeros. So still, all of those would go in this because this zero would represent five through nines and we didn't have any five through nines. So a st split stem plot would get you nowhere. Okay, so dot plots work well when the range is very small. Uh, dot plots work well with whole numbers. Uh, if you tried graphing something with uh, decimal values, then it's kind of tougher to do with a dot plot. With a stem plot, we could say all of these numbers, instead of them being percentages, let's give it a different context. We could say all of these numbers represent, um, again, like uh, minimum wages. So really, when you see a five and a one, that means $5.10. So decimals and non-whole number values are absolutely possible and much more possible with a stem plot than they are with a dot plot. And the last point is that stem plots work well with two or more digit numbers. Uh, and I said whole or even few decimal places. And again, dot plots really don't work well with those uh, bigger numbers, and they don't work well with decimal numbers. Now, the last thing I would like you to do to end this video is I've given you a data set, and I've really given you no context of this data set, but I would like you to create a stem plot. And you have to decide, should I make a regular old stem plot? Should I maybe use a split stem plot? Uh, and you can't use a back-to-back -back stem plot because I haven't given you, number one, any context of this data, and number two, I haven't broken it down in some way by a categorical variable. Okay, so I haven't said like male versus female scores or whatever the case may be, freshman versus sophomore scores. So you have no categorical breakdown. So I'll leave it up to you. You can go split stem plot, you can go regular stem plot. And then, notice the red here, then describe the distribution of the scores. So give me the four main things that I'm looking for when I ask for the description of a distribution. All right, and that is all for video five.